How did you ultimately end up in Jersey? Um, after the awesome fire of Frankie and Mark Henry and Ricardo, I got off the plane and with a text from those guys and saying how proud they were of me. And we came so far in such a short, in short, such a short period of time. If only they had more time with me, I, they felt I can go so far in this game. And uh, with that, Mark signed the invite. Like, if you ever want to come out here to Jersey and train with us, it's always an open door for your mentality and work ethic. So sure enough, once the show aired, we planned it out. Once the show aired, I would do my little my viewing party for the first episode. And then the next day I was on the road and got to Jersey. And originally it happened, I was supposed to just come out here just to see what it's like, just to get some work as a part of the camp. And it just never left, really. You know, just go back and forth between Illinois and Jersey, but most of the time I'm here, and I love it. Bike life. Yeah, bike life, man. I grew up on two wheels. I learned how to ride a motorcycle or a dirt bike before I knew how to drive a car. So that's just something I'm always going to have. I can't, can't see myself never having two wheels underneath me. It's just like a dirt bike. I got... The crash rocking in, I got the Harley, I call it. The Harley, my wife's bike. That's what I want for the Ultimate Fighter, but she won't ride the crash rock with me, so she jump on a Harley, we go on to the beach or whatever, just roll down. And this is just when I want to get little, you know, get out there, get some speed, just have fun, let loose a little bit. So which one was the Ultimate Fighter bike? The Harley. You know, after I won the Ultimate Fighter, got the contract and was able to pick a bike. Uh, they didn't know I knew about bikes, so the bikes they was offering was kind of, Cheaper, not what I wanted. That cost me five thousand out the pocket, but that's cheaper than having to spend the whole twenty-five thousand up front myself. And yeah, first thing I did when I got into a house, I went and got a dirt bike. Like the next day after I moved into a house in the garage, I went and got a dirt bike because the trails that I hunt also is only right in the backyard. About a twenty-minute ride, you're onto the Clayton Pits, which is just like a a big old sand dune pit. Everybody meet up on the weekends and just rip it. So. Yeah, this is my life. This is my fun stuff. When we first got together, he really wasn't, I joke about this, but he wasn't all about hunting because he didn't get his license in New Jersey yet. So he really wasn't doing it. But once he got into it, it showed me a lot about who he is as a person. And it's not just fighting that he's like relentless in. He's relentless in anything he does. So he had found that passion and just, kept practicing, practicing, practicing. You know, the first year he didn't kill a lot, and then all of a sudden this year he's, I don't even know how many deer he's killed, like eight, maybe. <laughs> so he'll he'll take it and he runs with it, whatever he does, he finishes it and he follows through and he is very patient and persistent. And that is another great quality he has, especially as a fighter that helps him is that he's consistent. He will always, like, he goes through life at a run, you know, it's not like sprint, walk, sprint, walk. Everything he does is just a constant run. He's constantly getting better, working towards something. Just like with hunting, he's constantly practicing, working on it, and he can find balance between the two, which I think is hard for a lot of people. When he hunts, it doesn't take away from his training. I think it helps him because he needs that time to rest mentally and physically, because otherwise he'll just keep pushing, 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 training-wise. And he's learned over the years that he physically can't do that anymore, which is, I think, helped him a lot as a fighter, too. The main thing that keep me level headed and keep me want to go forward in my mind was just remember why you started. Like I didn't get in this because I just wanted to make the money. I got in this because I wanted to be the best. And one thing I always say is to be the best, you got to outwork the best. And then to get something you never had, you got to do things you never done. You know, I was training the same way. I've been here three years. I was doing the same consistent training over and over and over, over and over and over. Go to Mark Henry's, we hit pass. Go to Drew Carlson, hit jujitsu. We go to or All Stars, and we just lift and get stronger. And I started dilating and dissecting everything I did. It was like, is this making me better here? Is it? Am I plateauing here? Is it time to switch this up? Is it time to switch this up? And I just had to change strength and condition. That was it. Time to try something different. We're gonna think outside the box. Try something different. My Mark Henry, I sat him down like, all right. 
the moving and everything is great, but I don't think that's for me so much. I need to, I need to switch it up. Like when I got here, I wanted to be like Frankie Yeager. And that was the thing, I was moving like Frankie Yeager. I did so much movement and everything Frankie did because I wanted to be like Frankie Yeager. But now I got a name. I can't be Frankie Yeager. I'm too big. I got to be the next Corey Anderson. The grind never stops, do it. Never stop, baby. We worldwide, we international, we all day. Overtime, kid. Getting that work. And there we go, keep that bag with me. Get the bag. No position at all, right? No stopping, no thinking, just go. If you don't know what you're doing, just keep doing. Whatever you're doing, do it 100 miles an hour so you can't stop. A lot of people talk about him, him having a bad year last year, but like I said, it really didn't feel like a bad year. It's The mission's always the same. I never felt like, what are we gonna do? What's he gonna do? Like, he doesn't need fighting. He has plenty going on, and it, there's never that feeling in the air, like we have to be doing this. He trains like it's his main goal, but I don't know, there's never that like feeling of desperation which makes it fun because nothing changes. Even though he was losing, I want to see him win. It wasn't a bad year. This year, now that he, you know, he's on a good roll, I'm excited because he's hopefully going to get what's coming to him and I think he deserves it. And there's a lot of big opportunities. As you know, in the fight game, things change quickly. So it's just fickle and you got to be willing to roll with it no matter what. We have our own things going on, obviously. We're gonna have a baby this year. He is, you know, entitled contention, hopefully should be. And we're just looking forward to continuing on the journey. I mean, not much is gonna change. Obviously the focus with the kid is gonna be exciting and that's gonna be a main focus, but I think we're all both good at finding balance personally and professionally. He, I'm never worried like about his priorities and he's never easily swayed by popularity either. You know, I think a lot of fighters struggle with that. I'm never ever worried about it and I personally am not ever really insecure about him finding success either because he's, like I said, very solid and grounded regardless. Judges, you know how it is. We bang out. You Bad scrolls. You can't go out there and wait. That's Really, you gotta be more aggressive. Throw them punches. I'm losing my voice. Yelling combos. Yeah, I'm about to say me. yelling combos. I'm like, he's not gonna be throwing more than one. Let me just yell one. <laughs> give me a jab. <laughs> give me something straight. Give me a. I'm like, give me a knee. I'm just overthinking this shit. That's the big boy. That's the one we have. That's the one we after. We got plenty of pictures of him out there feeding. There he is at night again, coming in. Seven. There he is again. That's at three in the morning. He's out there every day. He's out. This was yesterday. He was out there. I went and checked the camera. He was out there again. This is at five oh eight p.m. So be hoping to pay off. He make it out there today. He ain't making it home. <laughs> he come out there today. It's over. How can you? I guess compare the similarities of hunting and finding that that you know shooting that perfect shot and finding that buck or the patience of sitting out there on the blind all day and and not getting anything and compare it to being a fighter and, and the pursuit of excellence in the UFC. I mean, it actually goes perfect. I mean, kind of like you, you said it. You sit out there in the blind sometimes. You sit out there all day. You put the time in and you get nothing. You know what I'm saying? We're in the fight world. Like, I've been in UFC four years now. I fought every who's who and there is that was before me. You know, I keep fighting these up-and-comer guys. Whatever they put in front of me, I fight them all. And right now, it's that thing saying, like, oh, Corey Anson deserves the title shot. And some people say, oh, no, he don't. And it's like UFC, I don't think, I don't know. You can think they, you can say they think I deserve it, but I got to wait a little bit more, wait till the Anthony Smith fight or whatever. But it's like the same thing. I've been putting in the work in the UFC. I have did everything I need to do. Yeah, I've lost, but I bounce back from my loss. I stay confident. I stay consistent. I keep going. I keep going. I keep pushing. You're always getting a better Corey Anderson every time. 
but you don't always get what you're out there putting the work in for. But you stay patient and you just keep working. So now we just sit and wait. You use your phone, talk, whatever it is. You can talk in like a low voice like this. Especially with the wind and the rain and wind. But sometimes shitty days call make shitty friends. So we have to wait and see.